Well, good morning, Interbet fans, and welcome to the preview for the Vol Classic Tuesday, the 9th of March. Um, and this is an eight race program. We kick off at uh, 5 to 1, 12.55. Uh, the Pentrometer is 21, so the course is pretty firm. And on the Vol Classic, which is quite a tight track, certainly you're going to have to be up there. Uh, six meter spur at the 600 meter mark, which means that they've got the last um, 600 meters to be able to spread out and get a run at them. And um, I've earmarked a couple of good ones, I think, today. I think that uh, we could have a very nice day here at the Vol Classic. And um, as I say, it just looks like one of those cards that we might be uh, okay with. First race of Maiden Plate, Phillies and Mares, they go 1,800 metres well. With a scratching of Siren of Grace and Destiny Rules, it leaves it pretty open. Uh, the favourites way to dream, uh, Gavin Larina for St. John Grey, and uh, certainly not a bad last run with Muzi aboard it and uh, now gets Gavin Larina. So the, everything looks points to this one being uh, having a very big chance. But I think Wondrous from the Mike Azzi stable. <coughs> Get my morning sneeze out the way. Wondrous from the Mike Azzi stable. I was saying number four on the card. Pierre Stratham's ridden this as two out of his last four starts and those were its best runs. So Wondrous might go very well for Pierre Stratham and certainly looks like to have some sort of chance. What else? Ice tea. I like the look of the blinkers being put on this one. Uh, as you've seen over the last couple of weeks, we find a couple of nice horses to win because the blinkers have been put on them. And uh, she got, uh, her last run wasn't too bad at all, although nine lengths, the winner won very, very easily and the forms worked out extremely well. So Ice-T might be the best value, although she's drawn 13. Randall Simon's got a problem from there. Offsides looks like well suited to the distance, now going up in trip. And I expect that to run well by Silvano out of a Stormcat mare. What a pedigree. Uh, you expect those type of horses really to be a decent. So offsides could be the, uh, the answer, but those four look like they should fight it out. Race two, Phillies and Mares, 76, they go 2,400 meters. Well, here I strongly like Ocean Forest. I think she's the right horse and um, she's got very good form. Uh, she's been running against uh, stronger than this and she's got a very big chance. If you look at the curvation run, uh, she's got to have a very big chance of turning over, overturning the tables with uh, Gavation. So I, I expect Ocean Forest to run very, very well here uh, in, uh, in the second, and that's my top choice. She's a cracker, uh, speed rating, top, good form too, relatively unexposed, looks the big danger. And then Gavation obviously comes into the race with some sort of chance. My strong fancy is, as I say, Ocean Forest. Race three, middle stakes, 2,400 meters. Well, with uh, young Patrick Davis, well, he's not so young anymore, sitting in uh, England, um, running racing from there, one doesn't, one can understand that these type of races still get put on and they really have no benefit to anyone. They've got to have a handicap and um, this is not uh, a good reflection. So you've got to look at the horses that are, are well uh, in here. And um, the horse that immediately struck me was Barrack. Mike de Cox put the blinkers back on this horse. Now, if you go back in his form, you'll see he won three in a row with the blinkers on. Then he didn't run a good race, so he took the blinkers off, and he's always been there or thereabouts. So I think the blinkers might be the key to getting this horse back in the winning circle. And I do like him today. Danger, cash time. Two very good last two starts. I fancy it on both occasions. He now gets Lyle Hewitson and um, uh, nothing better than the champion jockey. Drawn one, lots to like about him. But what else is there? Well, Apollo Robbins is your favorite. Um, he won a good one the race before last. And then he's, he's holding form, this horse. Um, will he get the 2-4 out of a lecture, man? That I'm not certain of. Front runners, um, Zealand Zest. He likes to go. Captain Chorus has got very good form, so he should be there or thereabouts, but can he give this lot weight? And Fife shows a lot of pace as well, so the pace should be on from here, and I'm expecting Barrick to be able to uh, win a race like this. Quite interesting to see uh, these uh, pedigrees. Master of my fate, three and four, Barrick and Apollo Robbins are both out of uh, fast mares, Bermuda Sloop and Lecture mares, uh, Captain L and Lecture mares. And they go a uh, mile and a quarter, mile and a half, so it just shows you. Uh, pedigree, 
uh, aren't always easy to work out. Race four, Mary Raid at 80, they go 1,000 meters, and Ice Eater is my top choice here. Speed rating, head, everything in this horse's favor. He should be able to get it right. He goes well for Dickon, and um, he certainly looks like this is the right type of field for him. So what can beat him? Well, Jim Cutter has won very well after a rest. He's won two out of his last three after a rest. That's good to know because he hasn't run since July last year. But he might just come out here and be fresh as well. And he certainly looks like um, the big, big danger. If he's well and he canters down this horse and not sweating and just behaving himself, you'd be, be better believe that he could win. Uh, Ramachandri Road, second run, look for an improvement. Warren Kennedy, big up as far as a jockey is concerned. And I think this horse has got some ability, so I'm putting him into my play as well. And then talk to the stars, I'm not leaving him out. Claim, for Claimer, he's come way down in the merit rating. And he, you know, class is eternal. Uh, and Corey is in a bit of form at the moment, although he's nine years old. He might just be the, the big result in the pick six. Race five, merit rated 90 fillies and mares. They go 1,000 meters. Well, another blinker strike for Southern Charm, and I really like that. Uh, got the form. She's shown that she's good enough to uh, mix it with some really good fillies, and I would think uh, Southern Charm will go very close here. So what's a danger? Greens comes off a rest, and she hasn't run well off a rest, so uh, <clears throat> you've got to take it with trust, some trust in um, her well-being in this race. And then the horses that are fit and well, Mind Reader, uh, very good last win. Uh, May Queen might find this a bit short for a number eight on the card. And Ulla looks like a big improver. Don't leave her out of any of your play. All of me, 16 to 1, looks like a big runner in this race as well. So I'm putting her in two. I think it's actually quite difficult if you go past Southern Charm. I do like Southern Charm with the blinkers. Race six. Mary rated uh, 94, they go 1,600 meters, and um, Bartholdi looks like the right horse here, the three-year-old, he's up and coming, he's won two out of four, um, he goes well for Kamala, and he should hold Namab Desert on their last run, um, the last time they met. Namab Desert then came out and ran in the guineas and um, showed that um, these horses are just off the type of class, although Namab Desert might be looking for more ground, and um, I expect him to be some sort of danger. Um, War Jewel wasn't striding out last time. Look for improvement. I really liked him last run. Uh, he's got you got to look for improvement with him because when Tor was not striding out, uh, they got to get on top of it and fix up the problems. He's had a couple of weeks to fix him up. Silver Spectrum, uh, this is a nice horse, and he's course and distance one from one. Gets Lyle. Uh, if he's fit and well, he hasn't run since June last year. He'll give them all a galloping lesson. He's better than this field. So he goes into the play as well. Race seven, merit rated 79, 1600 meters. And uh, my top choice here is Peek and Pie. I think she's well weighted, this um, filly, the three year old. Uh, she's won one from three. And if you look at the three year olds above her, Miracle Wonder's got to give her a kilo and a half. Lady Calavera's got to give her two and a half kilos. They're all three year olds with small, low profiles. They've all had three runs and uh, very much very similar but the one and a half kilos in her favor might easily just get a pass the post because she did win a good maiden and that form has been franked trattoria good win and then came out and uh, probably um, just needed the run with the apprentice on but uh, won a, may, um, a work riders race so i'm going with peak and pie uh, she's my strong first choice race eight merit rated 80 1600 meters and um, this is a very difficult race. Ice Lord is the, the horse that I thought was the right one. Uh, course and distance, three, one from three, two places. The big danger is Psycho King, uh, number eight on the card. Gavin Larina's right. Uh, one and a half um, kilo, kilos better off for one and a quarter length beating. Got to go very close. Take a close look at Romeo's Magic. This horse might run well. Last two runs were pretty good and um, I expect big improvement. And then Silver Master, good last run uh, and uh, certainly suited to the course. And Greek Fire uh, might be the best horse in the race. He's come down in the mirror of rating this horse, but he has drawn 12. And on that run to Ice Lord, where we picked up five Psycho King, he's not far off them here as well. So he could be a danger, but um, they look like the ones that will fight it out. 
So, all in all, pretty nice card at the Val, and as you see, I've uh, earmarked a couple that I really think are, st uh, are standouts, and then there's certainly uh, a number of horses that are pretty good each way bets in here. So hopefully you catch the exotics, and uh, from me, James Goodman, and the Interbet team, remember, the new Interbet um, uh, online site is fantastic for the games. Uh, you can pick out your games very easily by going through what you like to play and then picking out what type of um, table you want to be on. And c congratulations to some of the guys who are winning big on these Interbet games. From me, James Goodman, have a good one.